I want to welcome you to week two of our Linton at the Table group series. I hope your group got off to a great start last week, and I'm so excited about where we're going to be heading. My name is Dana Baker, and I'm the pastor at Grace Chapel East Lexington, and I also oversee a lot of our multicultural ministries here at Grace Chapel. I actually got an opportunity to see Pastor Tim's segment for the first time at the Life Community Leaders Brunch in late January. I remember sitting at a table with a lot of Life Community leaders and actually realizing how excited I was for the potential for this series. I also realized as Pastor Tim spoke that I had too taken a trip to Israel and to Jerusalem and I had been in the upper room and I remembered what it felt like to climb those stairs and be in that space. But as I sat there that morning and I realized my mind actually went not to the upper room uh, during before the crucifixion, which is where we find ourselves in John right now, but I went to the upper room after the resurrection when the disciples were gathered waiting for what Jesus had promised. And it turned out that that promise was the arrival of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. I've often thought about what it would have felt like to be in that room and feel the rush of the wind and the power of the Holy Spirit fall upon those present. And so as I sat there that morning, I thought about the possibility, what if God showed up in an amazing way during the next few weeks of these table group series? And so that's my hope for each of your groups. But today we're going to be focusing on chapter 14, and we're actually going to be talking a little bit more about rooms because that's where this chapter begins. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Now, this is probably a verse that's very familiar to a lot of you because it's often quoted at funerals. And even though it is a verse that is incredibly encouraging to those that have just lost a loved one, Many of the scholars point out that it's not actually completely clear what John is referring to. He could be referring to Easter. He could be referring to Pentecost, as I just talked about. He could be referring to our own death, or he could be referring to the second coming. But what is common to all of these is he talks about coming back and preparing a place for us. But what does that place look like? So the word that John uses in this particular chapter for room is mone, the Greek word. And it's actually an unusual word because it's only used twice in the entire New Testament, and both of them are in this particular chapter. But it's also related to another word, minnow, that is used in chapter 15, which means to abide or to remain. And that's actually used almost 11 times in chapter 15. And so I think that God chose that word particularly because he wanted us to make a connection between those two. One is a noun, monet, and one is a verb, minnow. Minnow means to abide or remain, so perhaps another way of looking at monet is an abode and a place where you abide. And I actually like that word better because if you think about a room, a room can actually be an empty space, a physical place, but it could be the empty of any person. Whereas an abode, just by its very nature, implies that someone is present. But as I delved a little bit more into this word, I came across a definition that I really liked, a place to tarry. Now, tarry is not a word that we would use very often, but I love it because it talks about Um, abiding in a place, staying in a place, but not being in a hurry, being willing to stay there and reside for as long as you need to be there. And I think that's the kind of space that Jesus wants to create for us. So these rooms are not just for the future, but they actually are about the present room in which you find yourself. And in verse 23, Jesus goes on to say, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and he will, we will come to him and make our home with him. So in this particular verse, the one where Monet is used a second time, he's not actually talking about a dwelling. He's talking about an indwelling, an indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that the father and Jesus will be with us because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And he goes on in the following verse to talk about this counselor, 
The Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So let's stop for a moment and actually try to imagine ourselves in that kind of place. So let's close our eyes. And you don't have to have been to Jerusalem in order to do this. Try to imagine yourself in an upper room with a group of people that are hearing some challenging things. If you remember from Pastor Tim's um, talk last week, his segment last week, he talked about that Jesus washed the disciples' feet. And then he pointed out that one of them was going to betray him. And of course, Peter jumps to their defense and he says, I will die with you. But Jesus quickly says, no, you actually, you'll deny me. You can almost feel the tension in the room. Now, in the Greek version of the Bible, there were no chapter divisions. And so these words that I read just a few minutes ago actually follow directly after that conversation with Peter. And so Jesus is trying to take what could have been a conversation out of control, and he's trying to ratchet it way down. He's trying to find words of encouragement. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And then from that point, Jesus patiently begins to answer not just Peter's questions, but questions of several of the disciples, of Thomas in verse 5 and Philip in verse 8, and Judas, not Judas Iscariot, in verse 22. He responds to their fears, to their concerns, to their confusion, what a whole range of emotions that they're feeling. And I, what I love about that is I believe that's the kind of room that God wants to create for us. He wants to create places where we can also have our questions and our fears and our confusion brought before him. In fact, I would say that that has always been one of our hopes for our life communities and now for these table groups is that each of these groups will become places, safe places, where we can go with those questions and concerns and confusion. And so I hope that that's something that you'll be able to do as you discuss the lesson in a little bit. We need those safe places, but it isn't just because they are places of tearing or abiding or because others are there. The ultimate reason they're safe places is because God's presence is there. Because look what, what John says, trust in God, trust also in me. Trust has actually been a really important word in my own journey for the past year as I've been asked to launch the campus at East Lexington. And it all came to a head when I went to a conference in December in Boston, a conference for women in leadership, and um, it's called, it was called Woven. And at that conference, they asked a question really early on, and they said, if you needed to come up with one word to describe the area where you most wanted to grow, what would it be? And very quickly, a word popped into my mind, confidence. And we actually texted it in, and they showed up on screens in the front of the conference. And as soon as I saw confidence up there, I went, oh, wow, maybe that wasn't the right word. That sounds like that's too much about me and about my own reliance. But then, just as quickly, something popped into my head again. It's not confidence in you, duh, it's confidence in God. And I went, yes, yes, that's really where I want to grow. And then after the first of the year, I was poking around on Facebook and I ran across a post from Cynthia Fantasia, who was our pastor of women here at Grace Chapel for 25 years. And on her Facebook page, she wrote, For seven years, as a new year dawns, I have chosen a word to live by. It's been a great journey through seven words. The Lord has taught me much as I lean into him and live that particular word. This year, my word is still Maybe God has a word for you. Happy New Year. And as I read that post, I realized, yes, I want a word to shape this upcoming year for me. But confidence in God was three words, and I needed one. And God quickly brought me to the word trust. So I hope that as you go into your discussion time now, that you really will feel that where you are in this place, right in this moment, you're in a safe place that you're with people that will listen to your fears, to your questions, to your confusion, 
and that they will give you a place where you can express that fully. Uh, that you might actually uh, share some of the same questions that either Peter or Philip or Thomas shared, that the scripture that you read might raise other questions, but that you feel comfortable being, to at, being able to ask what those questions are. Or perhaps as you read the scripture, maybe God will bring a particular word to mind, and maybe you'll have a word like trust that will be able to shape the rest of your Lenten journey or maybe the year ahead. Wherever God meets you, in this space, I hope that your time at the table will be a place where you can tarry.